In a hurry to get to the deliberations. Has Saskia spoken yet? That cunt inspired dreams of freedom among the peasantry. Now all Eden stands in flames. Peasants slaughter nobles. They just wanted a free Vergen. Free Vergen? To hell with a lot of you! Freedom. A magic word. It can replace nourishment, inspire the masses to fight. Those who cry freedom can perform miracles. Stennis underestimated the meaning of freedom when he poured poison into the mouth of one who spoke that word earnestly. Edern has no king. It has no ruler. Instead, it has famine, disease, bandits, and poverty. The fight for freedom is always good, but then rulers must be chosen and it all starts again. Yet the free are joyful, even if a bit hungry. Good that you're here. We don't have much time. Seems like we never do. First we have to get by the guards. Leave that to me. Be careful. I'm always careful. The Kingslayer! Get him! Might have tried to reason with them. Easier this way. Trust me. Path's clear. Can we go? Yeah, let's go. Everything will be revealed at last. Whether you like it or not, John Natalis, Tamaria will be divided. For the good of the entire North. The united forces of Kedwin and Redania will end the fighting among the Elder Houses and secure peace from Gorsvelen to Elendor. At present, Temeria is starting to resemble the Pontar Valley. Which, if I understand correctly, is currently controlled by Edern. You are mistaken, Radovid. Vergen is free. Free? What precisely does that mean? Lormark is not Kedwin's, and Edern no longer controls Upper Edern. We have rejected Prince Stennis. So I heard. And handed King Henselt's army a resounding defeat. Your forces, my dear lass, are nothing but a motley array of rebellious peasants and elven brigands. Sooner or later they will need to swear allegiance to someone, or they will be defeated and dispersed. The peoples of the Pontar Valley will swear allegiance to me, Queen Saskia. As an independent realm, we hereby speak in favor of reconstituting the Council and Conclave. You're a lovely girl, but you wish you from common stock. The sole crown you are worthy of donning is a wreath woven of wildflowers. Redania will recognize no other coronation. In that case, you must choose King Radovid. Will you carve up to Meria, or march on the Pontar Valley? Henselt, last of the line of the Unicorns, has sworn to recognize the Pontar Valley as a free realm. Philippa Eilhart witnessed it. Uh-uh-uh. Philippa Eilhart is in my dungeon, awaiting trial for treason. She was in your dungeon, Radovid, but is no longer. She will sit at my side in Vergen as my royal advisor. To the matter at hand. The document describing the charter of the Council and the Conclave is, as previously ascertained, an exact copy of the charter found in the ruins on Thanet Island. The more important question relates to the Conclave and its power to designate royal advisers. Today, randomly chosen majors and sorceresses reside at many courts. However, in the time of the previous Conclave, such persons were carefully chosen. 
Why shouldn't we pick our own advisors? These individuals bear great responsibility, Your Majesty. The Conclave needs to be certain they are competent. And that they will keep the Conclave's interests in mind. Obviously, sire. The Conclave's chief interest is the well-being and prosperity of the Northern Kingdoms. The document has been signed by every member of the Conclave we have proposed, as well as by all but one of the designated advisors. We await only Sheila de Tansaville's signature. Without our royal seals, you shall be allowed to designate advisors to cowherds at most. That is true, Your Majesty. Sheila de Tanserville should never be allowed to sign this document. Triss Merigold, you decided to join us after all. De Tanserville has royal blood on her hands. She can't sit on the Conclave. That is a lie. Have you anything to support these claims, Merigold? There are witnesses who will confirm that Sheila de Tanserville was behind the assassinations of Demavend and Foltest. Officials of the Future Council and Conclave. Sheila de Tanzaville should be arrested and tried. If Triss Merigold speaks the truth, Lady de Tanzaville will be condemned to death. Sheila de Tanzaville, until Triss Merigold's charges are dismissed or refuted, you cannot sit on the conclave. Arrest her. You don't know the whole truth. Merigold doesn't know what she's talking about. I've already managed to stabilize the portal. You've got nowhere to run. Sooner or later, somebody will find you. I prefer to leave on my own terms. Where's Letho? Sir Synthesis will tend to him, as she will to all the fools who get a hard on at the mere thought of burning a sorceress at the stake. Where is he? I don't know, fool. I've been looking for him since Foltest's assassination. Letho cheated all of us. We were deceived by his dull face and sluggish stare. Don't you understand? The Lodge sought a way to get rid of Demavend, that's true. He was a weak, volatile king. Edern would eventually choke to death under his rule. 
who chose the lesser evil. He had to be eliminated, and Letho happened to be at hand. Voltest? Henselt? We had nothing to do with that. After assassinating Demavend, Letho used our gold and magical support to find and meet Yorveth. The elf was to help him hide until the matter blew over, or so I thought. The Lodge did not condemn Voltest to die. Then who did? Nilfgaard. Letho is the King of Liars and Emperor of Traitors. From the start, he worked for the glory of the Great Sun and the White Flame dancing on the graves of his foes. He lied to everyone. Me, your vet, your stupid little Triss. And you. Got any evidence? A moment ago, I received a message from the Lodge's agent in Sintra. The Imperial Army is on the move. They're fording the Yoruga now. Do you think the North can defend itself in the current situation? But can you count on another miracle at Brenner? I don't know, but you made it all possible and you'll answer for that. The stigma of treason is yours for all time. We shall see. For no one will leave this city alive. No one will tell this story. Philippa controls the dragon. As soon as I disappear, it will turn the city into a flaming tomb. We may have lost a battle, but the war is just beginning. You, however shall not take part in it. This is your end, Witcher. Farewell! Something's not right! The diamond! Someone replace the diamond! This one's flawed! I'll be torn to bits! Geralt, remove it! The diamond! Remove the diamond! I'll give you anything you want!
Are you all right? More or less. And the dragon? Dragoness. Saskia's alive. Wounded and weak from loss of blood, but alive. The spell is still working. Unimportant. As long as Saskia lives, there's hope that we can break it. Besides, I don't kill dragons. Philippa won't easily give up such a powerful weapon. Triss, please understand. The last thing I want to do is slaughter one of the most beautiful creatures I've ever seen. Saskia is good incarnate. She's the exact antithesis of Eilhart and your former friends. They should be punished. You're right. I just wanted... I know what you wanted, and you're probably right in some way. But this time, logic and calculation are unimportant. If we have even the slimmest chance of breaking the spell and freeing Saskia, we need to try. Let's get out of here. I guess Letho got away. He's waiting for you. Waiting? Hmm. Where the Temerians made camp. Come on. What do you mean, waiting? How do you know? Utter chaos broke out after the dragon attacked. I tried to reach Philippa's quarters. A terrified man approached me in one of the alleys, gave me a letter and begged me not to harm him. He said it was for you. The letter was short. I'm waiting in the Temerian camp. Letho. What happened here while I was gone? All the kings had many more armed men than they should have had at a peace summit. During the evacuation... The Order's knights raped two sorceresses and killed those who dared try to help them. Do you think the Council and Conclave will survive? Well, they're established, and that's the only thing that prevented a wholesale massacre. Hard to say if they'll survive, but for the time being, no one's got any better ideas. Mages are part of this world, whether people like it or not. They have to have their rights, their place. Otherwise, another lodge will arise. Any idea what happened to Roach? Yes, Radovid tried to buy him off. I'm sure you can guess Roach turned him down. Some things will never change. Tamaria might not be on the map of the North much longer, but as long as men like Roach are around, there is hope for its rebirth. Don't pin that mess on me. I don't intend to. You asked. Look out! Marauders! I think he's coming too. Oh, bollocks. The whore son's in agony. Won't be long now. Look at that. The cleverest of elven bandits, beaten burnt like ordinary scum. This is the handiwork of some mage. I'd wager my wife on it. You shouldn't have taken that trinket. You know they'll ask what he had on him. And you'll not peep a word. Understand? Hey, you. Piss off, we've got a dangerous prisoner here. A prisoner? Did you capture him? None of your concern. Buzz off, freak. Piss off, I said! You don't have to. I do. He knows how I lost my memory. Wait for me at the city gate. If I'm not there within the hour, leave without me. Took you a while? Is that bobble from Sheila's megascope? Mm-hmm. 
final prank. I switched the diamonds. The one in the megascope has a flaw, minute, but just large enough to warp the teleport. The Emperor's magic theorists assured me the effect would be spectacular. Oh, it was. Good. Had she lived, she would have suffered more intensely and much longer. She helped me quite a bit, through naivety and pride. I would not have gotten far without her. Hmm. So, ready to lay your cards out on the table? No matter the game, there comes a point when all the players need to show their cards. I love that moment. But first... Vodka. I suppose my throat's a little dry? In that case, let's drink to old friendships. Recovered your memory yet? Not entirely. Remember how we first met? Yeah, I saved your life. Couldn't think of a nicer way to pay me back? Frankly, I couldn't. I mean, taking care of another man's woman, Yennefer. I can't fathom what you saw in her, but I suppose there's no accounting for taste. The Winter Solstice 1270. Midinvern, the Night of Magic. Letho wasn't lying, the hunt had stopped. At the hanged man's tree, the spectral riders selected from among those they had taken. Yennefer was among them. A wraith cannot be killed, only driven away. Every witcher knows that. Yet the riders fell beneath the blows of our witcher's blades. Crimson blood flowed from under their dead men's armor. We could not kill them all. They were simply too many. A stalemate. He was different from all other elves. There was no shame in his gaze. He had never suffered persecution. He had endured no massacres. Humans had not taken his land. This elf was not of this world. He was an invader. We struck a deal. My soul for that of Yennefer. He agreed without hesitation. Back with me, friend. Got the feeling you left for a minute. Memories. I remember the hanged man's tree and the wild hunt. I remember the exchange. Me for Yennefer. So, cards out on the table. Unless you chase me all that way just to kill me. I chased you for lots of reasons. You owe me some explanations to start with. Let's say I do. Tell me about Yennefer. What happened after I departed? She was feverish for several days. Delirious. In agony. We thought that was it. She was on her way out. Somehow she recovered. But even then she was disoriented. Amnesia like you. What then? Well, the woman turned out to be quite a character. Throwing temper tantrums, trying to seduce orcs, trying to drive a wedge between us. After you so nobly sacrificed yourself, we thought it'd be dumb just to leave her somewhere. She wouldn't have survived more than a month. The whims and vigor of a duchess, but she was just a sorceress with no memory. We were in the heart of the Empire. And as I'm sure you know, Geralt, in Nilfgaard, mages who behave like that either drop their bad habits quickly, or are drawn and quartered by horses in the middle of Victory Square. So I heard. So we set out, wandered through the provinces. Everywhere we went, she got in trouble and we pulled her out. And then one day they captured us. The Imperial Secret Police. Me, Ark, Sarit, and Yennefer. Imperial Secret Police? Mm-hmm. We were separated, and they questioned us. Long and thoroughly. 
but it was uneventful. No violence. That's how I met Vatia de Rideau. And a couple of weeks later, the Emperor himself. Me. A simple witcher. What happened to Yennefer? I don't know. Never saw her again. The Emperor offered me a mission in the Northern Kingdoms. As for Yennefer, I had the feeling she was somehow important to Emir. As I see it, they learned of the Lodge from her. Those Imperial spooks have their ways. All I heard is that Vatier had his men watch Yennefer closely throughout the time she was at the palace. Then we went off to slay the kings of the north. And that's where my knowledge ends. So she's in the Empire? She was when I left. How did you know where we'd find the Wild Hunt? Every Witcher who wears the Viper around his neck knows the place. We had so many books and scrolls about the hunt that I used to think our school was founded for the very purpose of solving the riddle of the Spectral Riders. Know who they are? You know the true identities of the Riders? From what I understand, they're some damn elven race. But they turned out to be a big ruse. The legendary omen of war proved to be a fairground attraction. No Market Square mage could possibly conjure up a cavalcade of wraiths speeding across the sky. Then there's the amnesia. No, there's something more, I assure you. Go ahead, enlighten me. I can tell you want to. There are a lot of legends and myths about it, but the Wild Hunt is a fact. I've fought and killed many of its wraiths. They were spectral emanations, the avatars of real riders. The riders we ran into by the Hanged Man's Tree. Are you telling me you were carried off by elves? Real material sons of bitches like the ordinary kind we deal with in this world? They may be ordinary in their world, but they're strangers in ours. The conjunction of spheres, know the theory? Do you know how monsters appeared in our world? There's not a witcher who doesn't know that. So you know there are other spheres? The most powerful of our mages can open passages between these worlds, and they usually do that to summon the monsters we then have to hunt. The elves we saw come from another world, and they weren't summoned. They found the way on their own. It's not exactly easy, so they usually send their spectral emanations. They come in person on special missions. As they did for you and Yennefer. Mm -hmm. So, elves from another world and their trained wraiths. What did they want from you? I've got an idea. But that's not your concern. How did a Witcher agree to kill humans at another human's bidding? At the Emperor's bidding, Geralt. And he's no ordinary human. The rulers of the North come up to about where his Pauline's end. Why? Simple. He promised to rebuild the School of the Viper. The Witcher's Order where I came to be. Witcher's schools in the South fell into ruin long ago. And Witchers themselves became internal exiles, banned from entering most cities. Besides Seret and Ox, I know of two other Witchers of the School of the Viper who should be alive and on the path. I don't know where they are. Haven't seen them for years. Now they can come out of hiding. They can come home. Why are you still here? Why did you wait for me this time? I knew you wouldn't give up. I knew you'd pursue me. And I don't aim to hide anymore. Fact is, only you know the truth about me. Well, and a couple of folks whose word isn't worth spit anymore. I never saw you as a foe. I want to go my way, but if I have to fight you first, so be it. This story ends here and now. Care to tell me what it was all about? Hmm. Kill as many rulers as we could. Lay the blame on the sorceresses. Breed chaos. 
prepare the north, soften it before the invasion. And you know what's incredible? We could not have imagined more fertile soil. No matter what the war's outcome, the northern monarchs will accuse one another. Pursue their God-given rights. Seek vengeance and be at each other's throats for years to come. The North resembles a whorehouse on fire, as your friend Dandelion would say. How did you manage to contact Sheila? It wasn't a problem once I learned of the Lodge's existence. Initially, she watched my every move. But sooner or later, everyone starts treating me like a big oaf. I mean, I can change how I look. I stayed close to Sheila, killed a few beasts for her, and whined about how unhappy I was, how unfair the world was. So much, in fact, that I actually got her gander up a few times. I made sure a few potentially trustworthy witnesses saw us together, could link us. Security in case I was captured. I also prepared to assassinate the King of Kavir. Esterad Tyson was to be the first victim of the mysterious assassins. But before I could do the dirty deed, Sheila asked me to slay Demavend. The gods had smiled upon me. I couldn't believe my luck. Here I'd been trying to figure out how to frame Sheila, and now all I needed was to carry out her orders and follow through. Where'd you get your information about the Lodge? From the Emperor and Vatir Durido, the Emperor's chief spy. And I believe they got it out of Yennefer. She recovered her memory? Nah. I'd never claim she informed on her friends consciously. I expect they found a way to tap into her memory in spite of her amnesia, and without her knowing it. There was a sorcerer present when I was questioned. A young, proud intelligence officer. Whatever the case, they gave me a list of the sorceresses in the lodge. Only Emir, Vatir, and I were present. Only we knew of the mission. How do you manage to slay Demavend? Sheila's magic. I mean, she could give us the King's every move. His habits, the positions of the palace guards, anything. All we had to do was navigate the labyrinth and land the final blow. Besides, she had plenty of gold for the preparations greased palms abundantly. It had all the makings of a cakewalk, but it's never that easy. We barely avoided our pursuers, and we wouldn't have if not for Yorveth Skyatel, another of Sheila's ideas. With Yorveth's elves, not only did we cut down Demavand, but traveling with them put us out of the Lodge's reach. We could calmly plan fall tests and Hensel's assassinations. How did you know Foltest would come to the Monastery Solar? Yorveth and I planned Foltest's murder. The King of Temeria would have to deal with the Lavalette sooner or later, and he made no secret of it. I was sure he'd want to recover his bastard children in the process. And where do they take the children when a castle's under siege? I had to become a monk, but I couldn't just arrive at the monastery and claim I'd seen the light. Not very believable. So one of Arian's patrols out in the forests happened on a Skyatel unit torturing a helpless monk. Arian's brave men drove off the elves and I found shelter in the monastery. No one noticed you had no wounds? I paid the monk who treated me a lot of orange to stay silent. Actually, it was only a loan. Because I killed him later. Only the dead can keep a secret. Then all I had to do was wait for the situation to develop. When I saw you enter the chamber with Faltes, I thought I might fail. Luckily, you failed. To recognize an old friend. 
When did you decide to get rid of Yorvith? As soon as I realized I couldn't manipulate him. A true fox, that one. He was so observant, so dangerous. I got the sense he might see through me at any moment. You made a mistake. You were untouchable as long as the Scoia'tael were protecting you. Maybe, but with Yorveth, my hands were tied. If I'd finished off Kieran, But you didn't. And that allowed me to drive a wedge between you and Yorveth. I forced you to flee. And I let you live. You know I could have killed you. You're forgetting. No, I remember. So Sheila was looking for you when she came to Flotsam. Mm-hmm. She thought she was still in control and wanted to get rid of me. I'd bet my eyes that she thought I'd lost my mind, or that Yorveth was manipulating me. And the North descended deeper into chaos. Exactly. There was just one problem. You. I could have killed you in the Elven Ruins. Thing is, you weren't really my enemy. You screwed up with Henselt. Sabrina's curse tore that down. First off, we got holed up in that hideout in the ravines. Then Sheila showed up and started watching Henselt like he was her own ass. By that time, his death was no longer necessary. Fate had smiled upon us again. I learned of the summit and the efforts to reconstitute the Council and Conclave. The ideal setting for the mission's grand finale. I'm done talking. Let's finish this. What a fight. Any vodka left in that bottle? A swig apiece. Here. The Imperial Army is probably crossing the Yoruga as we speak. Pure pandemonium will ensue. The North's finished. Time to go south, where the good life awaits. You're a fool, Letho. Both you and your Emperor are forgetting one thing. Misfortune brings people together. Very shortly, the North could be united like never before, thanks to you. But that's just not my concern anymore. I'm not your foe. I never was. Let me walk away and I will. You'll never see me again. Force me to fight, and this time I'll kill you. Time to fight. Ready? As I'll ever be. Of course not. I'm not a king slayer. Ah! No! 
Ugh! <laughs> 